Welcome to St. Matthew's um, on this, the first Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, Before you offer your gift, go and be reconciled. As brothers and sisters in God's family, we come together to ask our Father for forgiveness. Let us confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth, Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Collect for this first Sunday after Trinity, let us pray. O God, whose judgment shines like the light of day, you invite sinners and outcasts to the banquet of salvation. Heal our pride and self-righteousness as you send down upon us the gentle rain of your mercy. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. The first reading is from St Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 5, verses 1 to 8. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit which has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, although perhaps for a good person someone might actually die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For God's holy word, thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, 
O Lord. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out, to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon the Cananean. And Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment. Give without payment. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I was going to stop singing the Alleluia after Easter, but uh, due to popular demand, uh, I'm going to continue to do so. I may be stretching the definition of popular and demand there a bit. We are back in liturgical green. We last saw it in February in the short weeks between Christmas tide and Lent. But now, as Peter said last week, we have it until the season of remembrance, which begins in November. The time associated with liturgical green is also sometimes known as ordinary time. Ordinary. In these times we're going through, we long for the ordinary. A haircut. Don't look at the back of my head. I have to have a go with the clippers. A cup of tea. With a friend in your lounge church service. Our gospel today reminds us that we are not meant for the ordinary and the normal. That what we prepared for in purple and celebrated in white and gold and red is the extraordinary breaking in on the ordinary and the normal. God breaking into our world and bringing his kingdom in. Jesus summons his disciples to do exactly what he does, to proclaim the kingdom in words and enactment. By virtue of our baptism, we are their heirs, and their mission is ours. A poster has appeared around Winchester in the last couple of weeks. You may have seen it plastered onto telephone junction boxes and the like. It's an Extinction Rebellion poster, and it asks the question, 
back to normal. It's asking us, do we really want to go back to normal when all this is over? There is nothing good about the coronavirus. It's caused untold misery, serious sickness, and it's taken those we love. But amid this suffering, God's kingdom has broken through, just as it did in Jesus' day. There was nothing good about his situation, an occupied land riven with division, hate and poverty. But into that mess he danced, announcing the arrival of God's kingdom. Knowing that the kingdom comes not in perfect conditions, but in mess and suffering, is part of discipleship. It's what St Paul talks about in our first reading today. We endure suffering not because suffering is good, but because hope is born in it. The kingdom comes in it. And we know it. That's the gift the Holy Spirit gives us, to look for and know the signs of the kingdom amid pain and struggle. So how has the kingdom broken into our lives in the last few months? It's cast out some of our demons, those things which convince us that we are not dependent upon God. I don't know about you, but I had my whole year planned out. I knew when I was going on holiday, when I was going on retreat, when I was going to be priested, what was going to happen at work. And then all of a sudden, that was all gone. And instead, I found myself updating my will and leaving a letter on my desk, just in case. Because all of a sudden, we had to face the fact that we all might have entered into the autumn of our lives. Suddenly everything we think of as secure looked about as stable as that house built upon sand. It cured us of our valorization of money when we realised that wealth and status had no power against the virus. But those who we pay least are in fact the ones we need most. The kingdom broke in in a shower of a million acts of compassion and kindness that healed us. In the rediscovery of arts and creativity, in the absence of our ability to carry on consuming, in a renewed appreciation of the vision of the NHS, the gifts of teachers, the wisdom and faith of our wonderful monarch. It broke through in deep questions and a rediscovery of delight in others. The kingdom cured us of our unclean spirit of pollution in the silence of the skies, the refreshing of the air that allowed the earth and its creatures to breathe. It broke through with the realisation that our society's marginalisation of the elderly had reached unspeakable levels. The kingdom broke through when we grasped that the isolation, 
that's hard for us to bear is experienced every day as normality by millions of our elderly and disabled neighbours. It broke through in the realisation that the confinement that imprisoned us is what we impose on wild animals kept for our entertainment. It erupted in the recognition that the fear that gripped our hearts in the lockdown is fear experienced every day by many black people, other ethnic minorities and other minorities who do not feel entirely safe and equal in their own country. To normal, we, you and I, are children of God's kingdom. The disciples of Jesus cannot let the signs of the kingdom born in the last few months be smothered by the return to the normal. They have been freely given to us and we must do all we can to protect and preserve them, whatever the cost. We cannot go back to normal, even while others try to close normality back over us. We will be in liturgical green for many, many weeks now. Green is the colour of growth, renewal and healing. It's the colour of the kingdom breaking in among us. When we see it in the coming weeks, let it remind us of what we are all called to do. Each of us as clearly and really as Jesus called his first disciples to point to where the kingdom has interrupted our normality and to stand against those forces which would seek to smother it with a return to our familiar systems and practices. To draw on the imagery used in Philip Larkin's poem, The Trees, our role is to proclaim that normality is dead and because of what God has done for us in Christ, we can all begin afresh, afresh, afresh. Amen. Let us be still before God and feel his presence with us now. Holy God, fountain of light and truth, Help us to understand the cause of unrest and tension in the world. Open our eyes to economic wrongs and racial bias. Deepen our concern for all those who are disadvantaged and stir in us a burning sense of responsibility for one another. Oh Lord, Sovereign Lord, 
We pray for the rulers of nations and all who are called to leadership. Give them vision to see far into the issues that we face. Courage to uphold what they believe to be right. Integrity in their words and motives. And may their service promote the welfare and peace of all people. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Living Lord, guide and direct the minds of all who work to reshape the church and community. Restore faith and vision. Renew energies and love. Revive your people to new life and power. Oh, Lord. and our strength. We place into your loving arms all those who are weary and worn down, those who are suffering and those who are fearful for their future. Support and comfort them in their distress. Give them courage to endure and strength to overcome. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God of love, we hold up to you all who have died and are now in your safekeeping. Bless all who are struggling with the pain of grief and loss. May they find comfort in your loving arms. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father God, we thank you for all that you have given us and most especially for the gift of hope and all that reminds us of your promise of eternal life. Oh, Lord,
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. We meet in Christ's name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us offer each other in our homes, wherever we are, the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty, for everything in heaven and earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Trinity of grace and love, we thank and praise you for your purpose before the foundation of the world, to open your dance of delight, to include even us, and you shaped your very life, to incorporate us in your dance forever. While we were yet sinners, Christ not only came among us, but died at our hands, in the glory of his resurrection, he called ones like us to be his apostles and spread the good news of his mercy to all the world. And so with apostles and saints and angels and every creature in whose heart your song is sung, we join our voices in your eternal praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Abiding God, in three visitors you appeared to Abraham in the heat of the day, and before him you broke bread and made your glorious purpose known. Come among your people today, that in the sharing of food we may be made bearers of your covenant of grace. Send your Holy Spirit on the bread that we break and the cup that we share, that they may be for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who at supper with his disciples took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup. Again he gave you thanks and gave it to his disciples saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Sustaining God as your servant Paul and his Lord Christ before him suffered and endured, strengthen your church and hasten your kingdom through the witness of your people under persecution. When your children are oppressed, give them courage to endure. When they find strength to endure, produce in them character to reflect your truth. When they develop character, manifest in them the hope of your deliverance. When they grow in hope, do not disappoint them, but roll down justice like a never-failing stream until that day when a new heaven and a new earth engulf the longings of your aching people, God of eternity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Jesus, Lamb of God, Jesus, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Jesus, Lamb of God, Jesus, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace, grant us your peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for us all. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shed for us all. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son and Holy Spirit and live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Hold us firm in the faith that we may know you in all your ways 
and evermore rejoice in your eternal glory, who are three persons, yet one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your dear Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love defend you on every side and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.